Amen. Amen. To uphold us as we go through this journey. Right. Amen. I'm going to read a portion of 1 John. Third chapter. Praise God. Like I said, just a, we, 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 we know we are, how you say, strangers in this land. Yeah. Even though God made man and put him down here on the earth and all these things and man sinned and we got into some situations in life and it carries over from generation to generation. Things don't change, times don't change, hundreds of years don't change. The same circumstances of man still got to be going through until we leave here. Mm -hmm. We come in this world full of trouble and we go through some trouble while we're here. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And until we find our place in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. and the reason why his love lifted me and why God gave him for us Amen. A ransom for our sins. And we can come to him and just unload on him. And he can help us. Amen. Amen. We need strength for the journey and power to stand. Amen. Because surely, truly, we know we fail sometimes. Hmm. It's not an excuse. Hmm. But we have an advocate. We're supposed to come to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're supposed to come to him for forgiveness. Yeah. We're supposed to come to him for strength. We're supposed to come to him for the power to stand, Jeez. for the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that we can stand without sin. Amen. And until we arrive there, it's going to be, you know, there's some difficulties that we have to overcome. Amen. And even when we receive his Holy Spirit, the enemy's still trying to, you know, get us to turn around. He can't take it from us, but he tried to make us give it up. Amen. Amen. So we have a job to do hold on. and to be steadfast and hold, hold on. on. But if we don't do anything else, I think of us as our as children, and we say he's our father. Mm. Amen. And he's like a prime example in our in Jesus Christ for us to follow. Mm -hmm. We know that if we look to him, the author and finish of our faith, we can make this journey. Mm -hmm. Amen. So though we know we get chastised, yeah. though we know we get down on ourselves because of the mistakes and the things we do and the things we make, and we are so humbled and sorry for our condition, we know we are to repent and then come to him. Yeah. Amen? So that he can abundantly pardon us. Yeah. And then we are free. Amen. Not to sin some more. God forbid, as it says in Romans. But we are free to follow the right path Amen. and continue to seek his face for strength for that journey and power to stand. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Mm. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we shall know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For he, we shall know, will, you know for we shall see him as he is. So right now we're in the flesh. We only see, we see one another. And we see God as an a unseen image. We can feel his spirit and his presence, but we don't physically see him. We see his works. Amen. Amen. We see his deeds amongst the people, but we don't see him fully as he is. Amen. But when he appears again, we will see him as he is because we will see him in the spirit. Amen. Amen. We can't take this flesh with us. It's corrupted. Mm -hmm. It's only here for a temporary purpose to house our spirit mm -hmm. and to facilitate service unto the Lord, to be his servants. Amen. And servants to one another. But when he shall appear, we shall see him as he is, which means we will see him in our spiritual being. Mm. Amen? Amen? We walk, see, in this earth, we have to walk not after the flesh, minding the things that this flesh wants, the desires of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. These things are not of God. They're temporary, and they are going to pass away. And the devil and his workers that have part in that are going to suffer for their deeds. But God wants us to live beyond that. He wants us to take on his nature, his spirit. Amen? And the more we look to him, the more we seek his face, call on his name, the more we seek to be more like you, Lord, more like you in the spirit, the spirit man will live greater than this fleshly man. 
we're walking here in the body. But when our mind becomes more spirit and our soul becomes spirit filled, then we can walk in this flesh, but yet in a spiritualness and in a godly life. And we won't have the temptation. The temptations are going to come because the enemy knows what will tempt us to draw us away. But we'll be able to resist the devil and that he will flee. Amen? This is what God's love does for us. As a child, we, I said many times, we love our parents. We love them, oh, so much sometimes. We cling to them and we cling to their legs as little children. And as we grow up, they are in our heart. We, we love them. And we don't want to do, some of us did a whole lot of things. But when we realize how much it hurts their heart, it kind of softens us. You know what I'm saying? Anybody remember that? Hurting your parents' heart and making them upset and then feeling so remorseful because you know they love you so much and you love them so much and that you hurt them so bad. It made you feel sorrowful in your soul and you just wanted to do what it was, what it would take to please them. Not just that pleasing them would get you blessings and benefits and they would do a little extra for you when you made them happy or when you did the right thing, but because you cared and you loved them so much. This is what God, I used to think on that scripture, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We're supposed to be afraid of God, okay? We're supposed to be afraid of God. And as I taught my children, I said, you're not afraid of God. You're afraid of being out of his good pleasure, out of his good graces, out of his will, because you want him to be happy with you. You want him, you know, he loves you and he sacrificed and gave so much for you that you want to love him back and show them that, I'm sorry, I did wrong. I want your love. I, I, I don't want you to be upset with me. You know, when I got that kind of heart, soul, and mind, and when I taught that to my children, they said, you know, mom loves us so much. God loves us so much. We want to make him pleased. We want to make, that's the love that God had for us. And that's the love he wants us to have for him. To be afraid, to be out of his plan. Amen. Amen. To be afraid, not just be afraid of being lost, but to be afraid to pull away and lose out on his mercy, his grace, his goodness. Amen. We always going to lose. We get blessings, we lose blessings, we get this and we, you know. But to be afraid to walk according to the work laws of the flesh and then lose out with him in the end. That's a fear of God that we should take to heart. Amen? And that's the beginning of wisdom. Amen? You know, as children, we were taught, keep, uh, be mindful of what you see. Be careful of eyes, where, what you see. Be careful of feet, where you go. You know? Be careful of little hands, what you do. Because the Lord sits on his throne, or sits on hot something, and he sees you. He, he let, and it was a little song. I can't remember exactly how it went. But he sees everything we say, hears everything we say, he sees everything we do. So then, we cannot hide from him. Amen? Amen. You ever look behind and see who's looking? You know how children do when they look behind and see who's looking when they get ready to do something wrong? Mm -hmm. We know God sees it all. And when we start realizing that he does, and we start being conscious of how we want to please him. Amen? Amen. And because we love him. Yeah. Not just because we don't want to be punished, but because we love him. Because he does so much for us. Amen? Gave his son, gave his life, that we might live. Then we will understand the perfect love of God. Amen? Third verse. And every man that hath this hope in him, Purify himself, yeah. even as he, God, is pure. Amen? Amen? So this is the expectation for us to purify ourselves. Amen? Yeah. That means we need to make an effort. First John, honey. First John. It's back by Revelation. Yeah, you're in the other John. Thank God. Okay? We're in First John. It's back here by Revelation. Third chapter. Okay? Yes. So now, if we do love him like we say, we should be purifying ourselves. Amen? Amen. As we purify, and we ask God to come in and purify us, take out the old man, put in us.
the new and get wants to grow in the new creation. It starts when we first accept him, but then we have to grow in that new creation. Mm -hmm. Amen. A baby is born, but he don't stay the same. Mm -hmm. If he do something wrong, mm -hmm. he grows day by day, week by week, month by month. And so as the creation of Christ, being a new creature in Christ Jesus, we have to grow into this. We have to purify ourselves, even as he is pure. So anything you realize that God is not pleased with you, supposed to, as you see it in the word, I want this, I don't want that. Lord, take this from me. Lord, send your spirit to help shed this away. Mm -hmm. Give me the strength, the power, fasting, pray. Whatever it takes, mm -hmm. you purify yourself. People say you can't live holy, but they're lying. That's because they can't do it. Mm -hmm. If they seek him, they'll be able to. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Whatsoever commit, whosoever committed sin, committed sin transgresses also the law. Because the law tells us not to sin. Mm. For sin is the transgression of the law. Because if you didn't know what sin was, you couldn't transgress against it. Mm. If you didn't know the law said thou should not steal and you stole, mm -hmm. you can't really transgress nothing because you weren't taught that. You didn't know. But mm -hmm. once you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you do it, that's a transgression. Mm -hmm. All right? That's why this Bible is written. You will have no excuse if you didn't read it. That's your fault. Because mm. <laughs> you're going to be held accountable to all of these books when the judgment comes. So in other words, you're held accountable for what you, what you don't. If you're not held accountable for what you don't know, you're held accountable for what you do know. You're held accountable for what you do know, but you're also held accountable for what you had access to, but you just refused to receive it. So if you had a Bible sitting on the shelf, mm -hmm. And it tells you what sin is, it tells you the Ten Commandments, and you didn't bother to read it, you still held accountable because you got it available. You ain't living in a foreign land where you couldn't get it. And nobody could tell you. That's why God is sending messengers out all over the world. Mm -hmm. So people are being held accountable. That's right. That's right. Amen? Because the Bible says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Right. As in the provocation. This word will not pass until everyone has had an opportunity. Opportunity. Either come to it, find it, get it. Somebody has heard away. But if they turned their heart away and did not receive the opportunity or pursue it to find out, that was their opportunity. Amen. All right? God is not going to judge you according to something that you didn't have opportunity to, to get. It's like if you go to school and they pass you from fourth to fifth grade, or just no child left behind law, and you didn't learn diddly why you were sitting in there. Not a pleasant thing. You just sat in there and played with paper airplanes and rocked on your chair and teased the other that clowned around. Guess what? You might go to the fifth grade and pass along, but when the end comes, you don't know nothing. You didn't get the timetables right because you didn't learn whatever 11, 12 timetables you were supposed to get in that grade level. You didn't learn the beginning of geometry skills. You didn't learn English literature like you should have. You can't have read, whatever. Cause you, and you left it, you, they passed you over. Oh, 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 I went to the next grade. But the ones that studied and worked and really got good grades, they're the ones that got to keep on going and be able to go to college and be able to get good jobs and what have you. Whereas those that got passed along because they said, don't leave them behind, they're not going to know nothing. They're going to be unprepared for what the things of life going to bring because they were too busy clowning around. So who's going to get what's supposed to get? And who's going to get? Who transgressed? The one that did not listen. The one that did not apply himself and try. They are the ones, they had opportunity, but they didn't want it. They held accountable for it because they had opportunity. Okay? So there is no excuse. God said everyone was going to have an opportunity. He gave his son. I told somebody on today, I said, you know, this word is, is fine. They say, oh, he came to the Jews and they didn't receive him not because he was a Jew and this and that and the other and they wanted him to take over as a king and they wanted him to do this and then when they didn't do it the way the natural mind thought, mm -hmm. crucify, we don't need you understand? But he was, he already claimed to do that anyway. He knew his people, who they were and how they were. 
but his true servants receive him. And he said, for those that came him, to them gave he power to become mm -hmm. the sons of God. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he's yet giving those who want to come to him and receive him power to become the sons of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. I, 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 listen, I told somebody today, I said, you know what? Jesus came in a perfect way. He didn't just come as the Lord of the Jews, the King of the Jews, the King, you know, and people say, oh, he came in, you know, and they called him a son of a, 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 a bastard child because his father Melda wasn't married and thought about it, died, didn't realize he was the son of God in the first place and all of this stuff. But you know what? In his lineage, if you read in Matthew, I believe there's a couple of women in there. Most of the lineage always lists all the men mm -hmm. in your history. This one begat the father, this one, this one, the father, that. But I believe if you read it, there's two women in there. One was a hoe, and one was a Moabitess who was a below, below, below Jews because she married into the family of a Jewish family. And then when her husband died, she went with her mother-in-law back to her homeland. They were looking kind of pitiful, but God had a plan and she found grace and favor because she chose the God of her mother-in-law as her God. And said those pagans she was raised under, she chose that, which made her a follower, a worshiper. And she became in good grace and received, uh, we're talking about uh, Ruth and Naomi. And she received the blessing because the near kinsmen began to love her. And he had respect unto Naomi. And for this daughter-in-law that came to be the daughter she never had, and to bring her back into the family, including hoping that the near kinsman that really was supposed to marry her wouldn't want her. And then he was able to get her for himself. But it was the love that he saw and the love that came to him to want to be a, and want to take that thing on. It wasn't something he had to do. And that's just the way Jesus is. He didn't have to do it, but he laid down his life because he knew there was no other choice for us. So that put him and her seed in the lineage of Jesus. And down the line, even Rahab as that, she, the line went out the window and she helped the, the, the spies, Caleb and Joshua, to get away from the enemy when they came to spy on the land. And they said they would honor her for allowing them to get away. And she put that thing, that scarlet ribbon or whatever, rope out the window, her and her family would be spared from all those other pagan worshipers and everything. So they, when the Jews take over and they began to live there, they were spared and they were able to serve and worship their God and were engrafted in, even in that day. The Jews had respect to them because they took, became a partaker with them. And she's in the lineage of David. So we see that even from the beginning, Jesus, though he came to the Jews, he, we were always a part of this inheritance. Amen? Amen. And sinners have always been able to come and repent and seek God's face and find favor and grace, even before God to the Son, and His Spirit came to give us life. So we follow the example, amen, all the way up. Now we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Hmm. The Spirit of God comes to dwell in us to keep us from sin. We just have to get it. Only thing keeping us from getting it is ourselves. Because we can have it if we want it. Amen? Next verse says, and he know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Hmm. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he, God, hmm. is righteous. Eight, he that committed sin is of the devil. Hmm. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, meaning he had to come, mm -hmm. that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. So whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. 
for his seed remaineth in him. So now, I'm going to stop right there just for a moment. It says, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. So if you're still sinning, you're not born of God. You need to get there. That means make some more effort. Because you, it is impossible for you to get there. He wouldn't have said it if you couldn't do it. Amen? For his seed remaineth in him. So now his seed, we're talking about that spiritual seed, the Holy Ghost. See, we, we, we confess our faults and we say we surrender to you, Lord, but we have to receive the Holy Ghost. That's the seed of God that will remain in us and that keep us from sin. That's that conscience that we don't override anymore because the Spirit of God will, don't do that. He'll talk to you. Let you know. You ever seen those crazy, back in the day, they used to have these crazy TV commercials or pictures, and they'd have a devil on one side poking you with a foot. Come on, do this. Come on, Lord, do it. You know you want to do this. And then it'd be a little quiet angel over this side, whispered in your right ear. And it just whispers. Because God not going to make you do nothing. He offered you the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And he whispered to you, you know, that's not the right thing. It's up to you to choose the right thing. Or the wrong. And the devil's always going to be there to whisper and talk. He hollers. Get loud. Oh, oh, overpower. To make you try to go his way. It's up to you to choose the right path. It's up to you to choose not to sin. It's up to you to resist the devil so that he will flee. Amen. Amen. You gotta fight against this thing. Don't get mealy mouthed and wishy washy. Oh, I just can't. It's a daily. You better fight. It's a daily struggle in life. Amen. But the word of God says he gives you power after that. So now, you can't sit there and just say, to make some effort to get there. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Fast and pray. Seek his face. Read your word. Call on him. If you don't do nothing, call Jesus, 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 Jesus. Help me. Come on. Come on. Come on. I want this. Charlie Howard and Scream weren't the baseball game in the football stadium. Mm -hmm. Then folks come to church and sit there. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get the Holy Ghost. Child, the way the people act like they at, at, out there on the hockey and fighting and carrying on and going through it. Uh, you think that people will fight you, but they think we're crazy and we pray to God. Mm. Point is, if you want something from him, you make an effort to get it. Amen? Amen. You heard me? Yeah. How many kids in there was little made an effort to go buy their gifts before it, if you got some gifts and you had some money to buy you something, went and trying to find it before the day came Tearing up stuff, trying to find out what you're going to get. You make some effort. You already know what you're going to get. You're going to get the Holy Ghost. Make some effort to find it. Make some effort to get it. You want the best mm. of everything? Seek his face. He's got it all. Amen? Amen. Said, I will give you the desires of your heart mm. if you delight yourself mm. in him. All right. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. That's letting us know that we have to have the seed of God, which is the spirit of God. And when he remains in us, we have power to live without sinning. And that's what he wants us to have. There's no sense in me saying, oh, Brother Jordan ain't going to do nothing. Sister Mitchell ain't going to get no better. She just knew. We are looking for more power to succeed. More power to overcome. Power of God to deliver. Amen? He cannot sin. And he cannot sin because of, he is born of God. In this, the children of God are.